How's it going, everyone? It's Sally from Boy with Sweat Drop. That was the day. It's June 8, 2021, and today we're going to focus on the next potential tropical cyclone that could form in the Western Caribbean next week. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather calls. And make sure to like if you like this video, and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather calls. So let's begin by taking a look at the current IR loop for. The entire Atlantic. So to point out where all the tropical waves are, we have a tropical wave that's towards the extreme southwestern portion of the Caribbean, just off the coast of Panama, bringing some thunderstorm and thunder shower activity to Colombia, to Panama as well. We also have another trough that isn't really visible on the IR loop which is just up north of the coast of Venezuela at this point. And we obviously do, of course, have an upper level low that's bringing a lot of thunderstorm activity throughout the Eastern Caribbean, which extends to Puerto Rico, um, Dominican Republic, and even as far south as, like I said, Panama. So um, there's a decent amount of thunderstorm activity currently in the Caribbean. And this is, of course, obviously something to watch when we're in the hurricane season. And we also have some convection coming off the coast of Eastern Africa. However, at this point in time, they are too far south to really develop into anything since the since um, low pressures need to be at least somewhat to the north of the equator so the coriolis effect really uh really um gets itself where the coriolis effect really has a big effect on low pressures and where it could begin to rotate and we begin to see those winds rotate because if it's this far south close to the equator the coriolis effect is far too weak for any sort of tropical cyclone development to occur however um it's however i want to point out that this thunderstorm activity could um is very important when because it will eventually move into northern south africa i mean south america continent and move into central america which could create which could pose a threat of a gyre and a lot of moisture in this region which could maybe lead to our next tropical cyclone which could lead to maybe tropical storm bill now in terms of what the national hurricane center is currently forecasting with the chance of a tropical cyclone and as you can see we're it's still a low chance at this point less than a 40 percent chance however um, it's interesting to point out that the chance has increased from yesterday and like i said yesterday um i would i wouldn't have been surprised if the chance of tropical cyclone formation increased as we head further and further into the future because Taking a look at the more long-term forecast based off what the computer models are saying, it seems more likely that if a tropical cyclone were to form, it will form later more in the long-term future. And of course, as we head closer and closer to that long-term future, then, um, then um, the chance should increase for tropical cyclone development. And that has exactly happened as now the chance has risen from 20 percent to 30 percent chance of tropical cyclone formation which yeah i'll say that isn't a ton it's still a low chance however again i wouldn't be surprised if over the next several days this chance continues to increase once a com once the computer models and the national hurricane center gains more confidence that there's going to be a lot of convection in this area headed into next week it could stay the same take it with um with the grain of salt is my speculation but but i've seen this pattern before and i certainly wouldn't be surprised if the chance does increase for tropical cyclone development as we head closer and closer to um to next week so taking a look at um the current um water vapor imagery it gives a better idea of where all the upper level troughs and the surface troughs are we do have one trough that's located right here like i stated um and just north of Venezuela. We also have an upper level low right centered just off the coast of Florida and it extends and we have another one in the middle of the Atlantic. So um, so in terms of the water temperatures in the southwestern Caribbean, which is another major factor in, in determining whether a tropical cyclone will develop or not. Like I said yesterday, there is plenty of warm water for this um, for um, any trough to um, absorb over the next several days and because we see the water temperatures above the 28 degrees celsius mark which is 
above 80 degrees, which is sufficient enough for tropical cyclone development. And it's not only the sea surface temperatures, we also need to take a look at the heat content with depth. And you see that there's a lot of upper ocean heat content just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula and just south of Cuba. Um, very close to where the National Hurricane Center is um, is forecasting a potential tropical cyclone formation. So there's going to be just plenty of water for this chop to this um, surface low to form um, as it heads into the Western Caribbean. So it seems like warm water won't at all be the issue for this storm as there's going to be plenty of it. And even if it were to move slowly and and upwell a lot of the deeper waters into the surface, there that there's still a lot of heat content in the deeper um, ocean in the deeper um, ocean um, layers to where it'll it'll have plenty of warm water to absorb and as a result it will develop. Take a look at the current wind shear map, um, which is another major factor in determining whether a tropical cycle will form or not. And you see most of the Atlantic is under fairly strong wind shear. Of course, like I stated, we have an upper level low that's an upper level trough that's extending from just off the coast of Costa Rica and it extends all the way north west into the middle Atlantic. And as a result, the upper level winds are coming strong from the west, which is going against the trade winds, which in this area typically come from the east. So as a result, we're seeing um, fairly strong um, wind shear since there is a strong since there is a very strong change in wind direction with height where the upper levels the winds are coming from the west while along the surface the winds are coming from the east which represents strong wind shear and this extends to the Gulf of Mexico as well where again we're seeing the up west the strong westerly upper level winds in that region however we do see some areas where the wind shear is light such as the southwestern caribbean where we do see a small area where the wind shear is currently light where the wind shear is currently light so as a result if there were a low pressure in this area there could be a chance of formation thanks to the lack of wind shear in this region it's a very small area but but tropical but low pressure systems could easily develop in even in small areas where the wind shear is light. So we need to pay close attention to that. And the reason why we aren't seeing a tropical cyclone form, despite the lack of wind shear in this region is because there's too much dry air and the trough that's currently expected to move eastward isn't exactly in the Southwestern Caribbean just yet. The low pressure is more, I'd say towards this area and it's still dealing with very strong wind shear from this upper level trough. However, as it moves eastward, the chance does increase for tropical cyclone development once we do see that low pressure system move into an area where the wind shear will be lighter and it will moisten up the atmosphere to the point where we could see trop uh, tropical cyclone form in this region. So take a look at the forecasting wind shear map from the GFS model. Um, Taking a look, of course, there's that strong wind shear still there thanks to this upper level trough. And we're seeing strong wind shear as well throughout the Gulf of Mexico thanks to another trough that's thanks to another upper level trough that's currently towards um, eastern Florida. And we have another um, surface trough that's bringing somewhat um, strong wind shear um, just off the coast of Texas. However, if we continue to move forward, you see that wind shear begins to dissipate as we do see that upper level low move further um, westward and we see the surface ridge begin to weaken. So as a result, we're going to see that upper level trough move more further and further eastward. And you see the wind shear definitely weakens in the southwestern Caribbean, which will definitely um, increase and enhance the chance of tropical cyclone formation, which is something very important we need to keep in mind that wind shear is expected to be light for quite a while in the southwestern caribbean and um and we do see that there's going to be quite a big area where a tropical cyclone could form taking a look at the relative humidity over uh, the next several days you see while 
currently there is a bit of dry air um, as of right now. However, as we see an influx of moisture and tropical waves move further eastward, we're gonna see we're gonna see the atmosphere moisten up to a point where we could see tropical cyclone, where it could enhance the risk of tropical cyclone formation. Where we do see just right around Friday, the atmosphere definitely begins to moisten up um, in the southwestern Caribbean, where the wind shear is light and um, this is definitely something to watch. Um, so, so despite the fact that there's um, there's like gonna be a high amount of humidity and that the, the wind shear is gonna be light in the southwestern Caribbean, and as well as the fact that the sea surface temperatures are very warm, what's gonna inhibit this storm from really developing? Because all those factors seem um, to favor um, tropical cyclone formation. So what's gonna inhibit it and it's and it's really um the and the thing that's really gonna inhibit it is for one thing it's gonna be land interaction because um despite the influx of moisture and low pressures and we're gonna see in this region it's gonna encounter a lot of land from these central american countries and you and we also have to keep in mind that a lot of these central american countries have very high elevations which will could completely kill any sort of low pressure system and the and it's gonna be and despite the influx of moisture it's gonna be very narrow and it's gonna mainly um, stay um, right around the right around the Caribbean um, I mean not the Caribbean um, the Central American countries for the most part so it won't have a large area of ocean water to really develop into uh, to develop into uh, rapidly into a tropical storm or a hurricane since it's gonna deal with so much land interaction. However, there is a there is still a pretty good possibility that maybe in the wet in the eastern Pacific, um, just off the coast of Central America, where tropical cyclone development could be possible, since it, um, there's also gonna be an influx of moisture and tropical waves moving through the eastern Pacific as well, where we could see more tropical cyclone development in the western Pacific, and it's possible that. Um, once a storm forms and makes landfall, um, if it if there is a storm, once a tropical storm, um, if it hits Central America, it could move into the Gulf of Mexico, and we could see the storm redevelop into an Atlantic tropical cyclone. So there's still a lot to unfold. There's still high uncertainty. Another thing that I think will inhibit tropical cyclone development is just the amount of troughs that are gonna really compete for. Of energy around their center of circulation because of course what hurricanes need is pretty much all the energy to focus in on one area and when we see a trough in the eastern Pacific when we see another trough um, just off the coast of Colombia and just a lot of convection overall that's really gonna compete um, that's really gonna take away energy from um, a lot of these old pressure systems since the energy is so spread out into different areas We need to see if there's going to be a center of circulation where the convection really focuses in on to see to determine whether or not a, a tropical cyclone will form in southwestern at, um, Atlantic at this point. So it's gonna take several days. We need to see if a gyre forms um, There's still a lot of uncertainty to see whether a tropical cyclone will form. However, um, throughout the Central um, America, um, American countries, you should at least prepare for heavy rainfall as whether it's going to become a tropical storm or not. Heavy rainfall should be likely in this area because there's a possibility that a gyre may form. And we're going to see an influx of tropical waves move through the, the Central American countries such as Costa Rica, Panama, Honduras, Belize, and even the Yucatan Peninsula. You guys need to be watching for heavy rain and for a lot of the Gulf Coast and even the Caribbean, you at least need to be staying aware of the Caribbean at this point since there is a possibility of tropical cyclone formation. There's still a lot of uncertainty, but I will make sure to update you guys once we become more certain with the forecast. In terms of the general direction where the um, this trough will form, I do believe that if a storm were to form, um, it would move northward because there's because um, currently the, the, there's a pretty strong ridge in the in the Western Atlantic at this point that's bringing strong easterly trade winds, which is steering a lot of these chops into Central America. However, as this chop weakens, we're gonna see a weakness in um, 
the uh, ridging throughout the Caribbean as a result, and that's gonna force the storm a little bit more north as winds shift more from an easterly direction to a southerly direction. So this should move northward and could maybe pose a threat to the Gulf of Mexico in the future, whether it forms or not. So we need to keep a close eye on this one. But anyways, guys, I think you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. If you want to see more about the content, make sure to like. If you like this video, make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more about the content. And I hope you guys have a good day.